Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing Last Time I Lied, written by Riley Sager. Here's the book. Now, before I go into what this book is about, I found it strange that this book is called Last Time I Lied, with the version I have. When I search for this book on Goodreads, it's called The Last Time I Lied. And there's so many different book covers with the at the start. So I'm wondering why that is. Why do some versions have the last time I lied and this version doesn't? But anyway, this book is about a cold case and I love cold cases. I love cold cases in any form, whether it's fiction, documentary, whatever it is, tell me it's about a cold case and I'll listen to it, I'll watch it, I'll be involved in it. So this is about a 15 year old mystery disappearance of three teenage girls from a summer camp. So straight away you get US vibes, don't you? Because where I'm from, there's no summer camps. And it just feels like it's set in the US and maybe for a US audience primarily. That's the thing I got from this book. But if you like mysteries, if you like cold cases, if you like twists and turns, because Riley Sager does write twists and turns in all these books, you may enjoy this book. And this book starts off with almost, it feels like it could be a dream sequence, a memory, I'm not really sure. And I think it's meant to add some sort of impact at the start. You know, suspense, tension, confusion, whatever it may be. It didn't for me. It didn't work for me. I'd preferred that not to be there, or if it's going to be there, make it shorter. Because it just didn't add anything to the overall feel of the book for me. It didn't drag me into it. It just didn't work. For me, that first little section was a waste of space. But anyway, then we meet a main character, Emma, and we meet her in the present day. And it's 15 years after a tragic event. So Emma is a painter, and she's only painting images that are based on that event 15 years ago. And she seems trapped there, trapped in the memory of that event. And she's carrying around some sort of guilt about that event as well. I'll tell you what the event was 15 years ago. That's part of the cold case, because it won't spoil anything. So Emma was at summer camp and she was sharing a dormitory room with three other girls. One night, those three other girls vanished. Emma was the only one left from that group. And she feels responsible because she was angry at them, locked the door and wouldn't let them back in when they went out at night. And she feels like because of that, that's the reason they vanished. And I just think that's a weak thing to carry for 15 years as a character in a story. But anyway... This summer camp is being reopened now 15 years later by the same owners. Why they want to reopen it? You'll find out in the book. It just feels like a strange idea to me anyway. And But the owners ask Emma to come back as an art teacher, almost like a camp leader. And I don't know if they're called camp leaders. Maybe they're camp counsellors, as they call them. I'm not sure. But she comes back to be an art teacher at the camp. They want her to come back for that. This is like the first red flag moment in the book. If something traumatic happened to you that many years ago that's so traumatic it still affects you now, would you go back to that same place and be there for, I think it's like four to six weeks? Would you do that? You know, it just feels odd to me. But this is, you know, a mystery. We've got to have suspense, a bit of tension. So the character does agree to go back there and spend time there because she thinks that while there, she's going to solve this cold case. And another thing about this book that felt odd to me. So Emma is back at the camp and she feels like she spends more time running around the woods herself and evading her responsibilities of being an art teacher or a camp leader or counsellor, whatever you call them, at this camp. And I just felt that strange. If she was hired to do certain things at the camp, you'd think she'd have responsibility to do that. But she seems to be able to run off and do her own thing, even take other teenage girls on trips and hikes and things with her while she's trying to solve this mystery and find things out. So I found that quite strange in this book. So this book is very much split narrative with past and present. The past being 15 years ago with young Emma at the camp with these girls before they vanish and leading up to when they vanish. The past narrative for me is the best thing in this story. I would have been so much happier if this book all had been about the past. If the whole story was set in the past and we got more exploration about Emma you know, immediately after the disappearance and all that thing about trying to find the girls who went missing, that would have been more gripping, I think. 
instead of having this split narrative that flips back and forward and the present day narrative feels just a bit of a mess to me anyway. The past narrative is brilliant. Everything about it, the way your characters are described, the way they're set up, the way the setting is, the things that go on, the way characters act, interact with each other, the things they say and do, all feels real. And those characters all feel real, even all the teenage characters. And not many authors can write great teenage characters. I feel like authors are always tempted to make teenage and child characters feel older than what they're meant to be. But in this book, they don't. Those teenage characters feel like teenagers, and they just fit everything about that past narrative. So for me, hands down, past narrative is so much better in this book, and the present day narrative kind of ruins things for me in this story. Without giving anything more about the plot away, let's talk about the book in general. So this book has a few tropes going on in it. One of the main tropes is unreliable narrator, especially in the present day narrative with our protagonist, Emma. She's not reliable because after the event, even 15 years later, she's got so much guilt that she had some sort of um, mental breakdown, I think, in those 15 year periods. So because of that, people are a bit cautious around her. And when things start to happen, they think she's unraveling. They think she's, you know, still traumatized by things and they don't trust her. And it, for me, in this book, the unreliable narrator just didn't work. It didn't gel with me. If you want a good example of unreliable narrator, read The Woman in the Window. That's a brilliant book, I think, for that kind of trope. Twists. There's many twists in this story. Riley Sager is known to write twists, and he puts them all through his books. But in this book, I think there's too many. Sometimes too many twists is not good. Sometimes fewer twists works out so much better. But if you put twists in your story, make sure they work. The twist at the end of this story that just doesn't work for me because it doesn't add up. The things you'd have to imagine this twist to happen don't add up. So I think not all twists are good twists. Sometimes if they're not going to feel real, just remove them altogether. Now clues. In a cold case mystery, you need clues to have new revelations. And I like that in cold case stories, whether it's a fact or fiction. I like the way clues are discovered. I like the way sometimes clues reveal certain things, whether it's a big thing or a small thing. Clues in this type of story are just fantastic, but they have to make sense. You know, the clues have to make some sort of sense to why they're there, why they were created or left behind in the first place. And there are some things in this book that just don't make sense to me. One example is a map, a hand-drawn map left there by one of the girls that disappeared. It doesn't make sense because it's not to scale anyway. There's like squiggles here and things here all over the place. And then there's an X marking something. Now, for me, if the person who drew that map already knew where something was, why would they need a map in the first place? And then why would they leave it there? It, the book makes it feel like it was left there deliberately for somebody to discover. I don't buy that in this story. It just felt very odd to me. I don't buy the way the protagonist, Emma, finds this clue in the first place. That felt strange to me as well. It felt very forced in the story. It didn't feel organic at all. So I think sometimes if you're going to include clues in your book, make sure the discovery of the clues is organic and make sure those clues just make sense because in this book, that whole clue just feels very strange to me. It just feels very forced. It feels like it's trying to force the narrative without things being organic in the first place. Characters in this book, in general, the characters in the past narrative are so much better. They're better described, well, they're well-rounded, they're just better in so many ways. In the present day narrative, the characters feel a little bit all over the place. They feel one-dimensional most of the time. They just don't feel real as characters. So I feel like the author should have taken more care for those characters in the present day narrative because sometimes they don't even match who they were in the in the past narrative. And I know people change in 15 years. Sometimes people may be so different that you don't match the two together, but there's gonna be something there that matches them. And there's not with many of the characters in this book. So Emma, the protagonist, in the past narrative, she's brilliant. So well written, feels like a real teenager, a brilliant character. In the present narrative, not so much. The character feels over the top, 
feels forced, doesn't feel organic at all. And that's much to do with the way the story is written, I think, the way the character is used in the story, and the way sometimes things come about, things are discovered through this character. I just think it makes the character feel just not real, feel not organic, just feel strange and not relating to that character 15 years ago. So for me, past Emma works very well. Present Emma doesn't work very well at all. Vivian being one of the teenagers that vanished 15 years ago. Now, Vivian is written very well through her facial expressions, her body language, the things she says, through her motivations while camping in those scenes. Everything about her screams teenager. It kind of also screams mean girl teenager sometimes, a bit of a trope sometimes in stories, but it suits the character and it kind of suits the whole story. But I think Riley Sager did a great thing with this character because it gave her many different facets. She can be caring, she can be you know, awful as well, she can be mean, she can be very receptive to other people's feelings as well. So there's all different things going on with this character that make her feel very real. She feels like a teenager, she feels like she fits where she is in the story. So it's very, very well done with this character. So Theo. Theo is a character I get the feelings meant to be a red herring, especially in the present narrative, but it doesn't work for me because the red herring character needs to be somebody you engage with and Theo just feels one dimensional. As a reader, I didn't engage with Theo at all. So for me, he felt like a non-entity sometimes in the story. So for red herrings to work in a story, they need to be three dimensional, need to be engaging, they need to make sense why they're a red herring in the first place. And Theo is not any of those things in this book, especially in the present narrative. Last Time I Lied, or The Last Time I Lied, depending where you are, possibly, is an okay book. It's not the worst book I've read. It's not brilliant. I don't think it's fantastic. I think it's above average, and I rate it a 3 out of 5. There are things in this book that I really enjoy mainly in the past narrative. The present narrative for me just feels like a bit of a mess. There are things there I think don't make sense. There are things there I think start out okay, then are forgotten. There are things discovered that don't feel organic. There's a lot going on in that present narrative that just I think needed more work. But for me that past narrative is brilliant. That's almost perfect. And if the book had been like that all the way through, maybe if the book had been just set in the past for the whole story, it would have been a perfect book. On my channel I review many mysteries. If you enjoy mysteries, check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to a video for another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.